Hello, hello. How is everyone doing out there? All right, wow, first one of the day. If you are here for modern musicians, you're in the right place. If you're not here for modern musicians, you know, we're gonna have a fun talk anyway. It is my pleasure to welcome out here four panelists. We're gonna talk about how they use social media and all kind of the tools that are at our fingertips in 2021 to get their music out here, get their uh, improve their brands, get their get their names out there in whatever way possible. So first, I'd like to welcome onto the stage Larusi, which, by the way, happy birthday! If you don't know, it's her birthday today. And, and I'd like to bring out Sandra Sahi. How's it going? I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing great. You no. Know. It's nice to be here. Yeah, you know, I feel like we should. Where are all my friends? Yeah, I'm this there she is. I'm here. All right, let's bring out Mohammed Al Sali. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I cannot complain. Amazing. <laughs> And finally, let's bring out Leah Makul. I apologize if I am, am mispronouncing someone's name. You're good. You're yeah, good. Old... You're good. <laughs> Where should I sit? Where should I sit? Oh, you can Third sit. power. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Muhammad, you're being left all alone over there. Um, well, let's start just talking about how you guys got started. Um, how you use, uh, maybe if you use social media in some way, a, a tool from the modern era to get your start. Um, let's start with Sandra. How, how do you so, make your start? Yeah, so, I mean, I started initially on social media um, because, well, I started making music when I was around 17, 16. I was here in Dubai. And uh, that's when the social media era kind of started to blow up here, especially in the region. Like that's the, the era that, you know, content creators were starting to, to, to rise and show their talents and everything that they're able to do on social media. So I think this is what helped me because mainly I think for many of us, we, I started doing covers personally. Um, so those covers would be uploaded on like my Instagram page, my YouTube, and that's when it started to slowly pick up. Gotcha. Cool. So I didn't start at all on social media. I started when I was 10 doing music. So my first gig was in a nightclub in my hometown. So I was the youngest person. So I really struggled actually um, to try to be all over because we didn't have social media uh, back then. So when it came uh, out, Instagram and all of this, it was a chance I feel like it's such a, a blessing to have such a, a platform to be able to share what we do, our art, and to be able to connect with people all around the, the world, you know. Uh, so I guess that I would say today it's easier to be able to be everywhere with our music uh, than before. Before it was just about you have to release uh, CDs, you know, to be able to be on the radios. And it was lots of work. And now you feel it's way easier to be out there, you know. So wait, your your first gig was when you were ten at a nightclub. Yeah, yeah. Wow, how did? That's crazy. I, I, <laughs> I'm just curious. How did that come to be? Well, <laughs> um, well, it's I'm 30 years old. So if I would talk about all my music career, yeah, I would talk for hours. But I mean, it was all about contact back then. And I was signed to a label, so. Yeah, it happened this way, and it was one of the most craziest uh, experience of my life. I mean, I was the youngest person in the room, <laughs> so, yeah. Gotcha. Wow. <laughs> um, Larissi, maybe you can share a little bit about yourself. I was uh, 17 years old when I started professionally. I participated in uh, Idols, the Dutch version, and it changed my life rapidly, so from being at school instantly into becoming a superstar in your country. Um, I 
was signed by BMG at that time. So I started the opposite uh, as the ladies. I started the old school way, with making CDs, with the whole team, E&R man, e manager. Um, and it was just a, a roller coaster for many, many years. Uh, did a lot of shows, uh, had my own tours in my country. I released like three albums, um, won several awards. Participated in the Eurovision Song Contest, which is the biggest festival in Europe, 215 million people watching, and I was representing my country. So this was one of the things that I always wanted to do when I was little. Um, and then, you know, I saw the industry changing, and for me, as an old school artist, uh, having to uh, adapt was not an easy thing as much as it sounds easier for these ladies i think for me it was like kind of crazy because i felt like i had to find different ways to be closer to my audience now the advantage was that social media allows you to talk with your fans directly which was a beautiful thing one of the projects that i did um, in my country was uh, a project called Celeband. It was the biggest uh, platform online and one of the first crowdfunding platforms. So after being signed, signed by a record label, I went to my fans directly and I asked them for help. And they helped me fund my project within 11 days. Uh, we raised like uh, 40,000 the first round. And these were the people that supported me in my journey and um, it was an, a new way of getting close to my audience and by buying, for example, or investing 15 euros, you would buy the album already. So in that way I was able to, you know, have this great uh, bonding with them and a new challenge uh, also for myself to accomplish a sort of independence as an artist. So that was the first step towards, and then social media started growing. And now I'm still learning, you know, it's very excited to be here at VidCon, uh, to learn from all these young artists, and also to find different ways and to share uh, knowledge. But the most beautiful thing is that there's so much talent out there, there's so much creativity nowadays and everyone can be an artist as long as you're true to yourself. Totally. Yeah. I feel like fan funding an album is something that just could not have existed a couple decades ago. I I mean, and now you, you hear people doing that pretty regularly. I, I yeah. have several friends who basically have like fan funded creating their own music. And, yes. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's awesome. It's incredible. Uh, Muhammad, uh, maybe you can share a little bit about yourself, your story, what you're up to, and how, how you started. So, in the beginning I started when I was a little kid, just yes. singing, and then I thought, why not learning uh, to play to play music, guitar or a piano, so I have a small story. I, I actually traveled when I was 16 years old, uh, or 15, mm -hmm. uh, with two of my friends, with no, like my family didn't even come with me to Dubai, and I have uh, paid for, uh, for a teacher to, uh, to, to give me lessons to play guitar. And then I've, uh, I've tried my best learning with him, but I'm, I'm really a bad learner. <laughs> like I, I, can, I can try to watch YouTube videos and learn from them, but not like a teacher who's trying to give me, yeah, I, yeah. You, you guys can relate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just took like three lessons and then I skipped everything else. And I went back to Saudi Arabia and uh, I bought my, my first guitar and I started playing music and I used to actually upload my videos on Facebook. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's a different platform. Wow, yes. when, <laughs> when, when was that? When like you were... 2011. Gotcha. 10. Uh, but I, 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 I don't know why, but I didn't even show my face. Like, I, I was filming me playing, like trying to play guitar, which is, it was horrible in the beginning. Uh, then I started like when Instagram showed up. I started yeah. like posting uh, videos of me singing covers. So uh, I think we have a lot of uh, like yeah, yeah things in common and similar stories. Uh, and after that, like in 2017, 
I released my first uh, single, yeah. which got like two million views. So for me, as a as an Instagram creator or something, uh, I feel that that was like wow, a single that I, I can actually produce a song and it gets more than two million views. So I think I have an opportunity. So I started working on myself and creating my own songs. Uh, and yeah, and right now I'm trying to to work hard and do more more songs. And I have like. In 2019, I've uploaded one of my songs who got more than 25 million views. So that, was, awesome. that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. So no more Facebook, no? No. <laughs> no. no. Was that 25 TikTok. million views that was on, that was on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. so crazy because now we have to be everywhere, literally. It's, it's such a work. I, I really call it social media. It's, it's really hard, you know? Like, we have to be everywhere. You have to post on Instagram, yes. on Facebook, on Twitter, on TikTok now. Like, Maybe if a new uh, platform will come soon, we, you know, you, we really have to be active. Everywhere. You have to, you have to follow the trends too. Like, you know, this whole, for example, let's say TikTok era. As soon as, as TikTok, you know, blew up, um, artists were also some of the first to be on the platform because, like, it's it's a way for your music to be out there too. And if we were to count how many songs blew up just because of TikTok, a lot. there's oh, literally man. TikTok playlists. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's insane. So you have to kind of be up to date um, with every new application that comes on every, you know. Consistency service. too. Consistency is, is one of the yeah. the most like you have to be consistent in your uploading on on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever platform you can find, just yeah. to be around. And I, I feel it's really all about balance because I'm gonna talk about my story, but uh, there is a phase. It was really dangerous for me. I found myself uh, not happy anymore because as an artist, we have to be active. You know, you have an audience that is waiting for you to share your journey, To they want to see it, you know, that, that's why they're following you. So I just found myself being happier just living this way without my phone, without posting. And unfortunately, as an artist, it doesn't work this way. So um, I used to not post anymore, to be inactive, and I would see my engagement go down. and. So it's really stressful. So I think now I found my balance where I know where I want to use my phone and post things and where I don't want to use my phone and just connect with people this way. And I think the most important is to stay healthy because if you don't know how to use social media, you can really go into a dark place. So Totally. I think it's tough when your business is basically you being connected. Oh my god, I literally, like two days ago, my phone crashed from like 9 a.m. to 12. <laughs> and I was like, I, I I felt, I was like, mom, my phone crashed. She's like, that's fine, go get it. I was like, no, mom, my like my phone crashed. Like, as in, my job. I, I don't have a job for three hours. So it's crazy. You were, and that's when you realize we're very dependent of um, those platforms. Because, because it is. And I feel we shouldn't feel this. We shouldn't. Place. It shouldn't be like that. This is like, if you don't have your phone, you should be okay, you know? Yeah, and was there a bit of relief almost that it crashed? It's like, well, there's nothing I can do now. It, it's, it's, you know, and it's yeah, crashed. The so. more, more minutes pass, the more I realize it, it, it's actually more peaceful, you know? But then obviously you, you miss out on a lot of things. Totally. Yeah. Th doesn't it push you guys, like, if, if you saw yourself feeling down because uh, of social media and, like, your engagement is going down. It happens a lot to, uh, for people, like even 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 I, I can relate. Doesn't it push you to work more? Because because like, yeah. I always feel it, it does. Like you 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 know yourself that you're you're a really good musician and and, and you are, you're really truthful to your fans. Uh, so and, like I, I can see it in the bright side, maybe. Like you, you can work harder. And I know everyone is working a lot, and it's really tough. But I think if, if you just thought about it as um, uh, as as something to push you more, I think you'll, you'll get the stress off. I think it's all about finding your balance in yes. it. Uh, for me, I'm such a pure artist. I write, you know, I do everything myself. I build my team the way. So I would I lo I enjoy connecting with my fans, but I also feel like sometimes I need to take. A step back just also to protect myself so sure. and and I want to share with my fans uh, my music and uh, in a way 
that they can feel connected to it when we sing live, when we do, when we are on the stage, when we are talking like this. Instead of giving them fake pictures, I, I, I think the most beautiful thing about social media is also that you can show your true self in a way you want. You don't have to show it every time you're eating, but you can show that you're working out, you can show that you're training. We had this conversation yesterday that you said to me, people don't know what it takes to be an artist. No, they don't see what's behind. And I think it's beautiful to show also that sometimes we have bad days, sometimes we're very sad, sometimes it's hard, you know? So I guess when people relate, because they also have this kind of life sometimes, we're not always happy. So I guess it's really important. Those people want to see real, real artists. And for me, they want to see us without any filter. And to answer your question, Mohammed, I think that what I've learned, it's not all about numbers. Like, yes. I, we should do this because we love it. Because, because that's how we first started. Yeah, not, to, not looking for numbers to have the million or to have this or that. I, I guess this is the most important Wait, thing. Going, uh, going out of your comfort zone, I think it's healthy. So sometimes when I feel that I'm, like, not desperate, but when I feel that I'm, I'm not feeling well because of, uh, of being on, on the spot all the time, uh, I think, yes, I can agree, it's, it's really healthy for you to, to do this away for like a month. But fans will, will never understand that because fans, when they love you, they need to see you every single minute. And that's really stressful, but people don't understand that. You're the only one who knows that. So, yeah. Do, do you ever, like, wish that you just, the numbers were invisible to you? That you could just post stuff and then you didn't even have to know 100%. how many people I mean, clicked like or something? Yeah. I love this new feature about Instagram. I really encourage people to use the hiding the likes because. You know, before all of the social media thing, you used to, if you're going to meet someone, for example, I'm going to meet Sandra, I want her to like me. So it was all about this, but now you want to please and be liked by millions of people. Why, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I, I guess... We, we really, we shouldn't care about this. We shouldn't, we shouldn't judge people based off their likes or their amount of followers. And this is what I see for myself as an old school artist, that sometimes when I step in a room, that the first thing people ask me, how many followers do you have? And I'm like, excuse me, I have a 20 year old <laughs> career. This is, this is I'm saying on the biggest stages, and it's like, this is the new world. But it taught me uh, in, in, just to stay closer to myself, and as a musician, just to do the things that I love. And, not listen to the rest of the world. Yeah. Well, jump, jumping off that, being maybe more from the traditional side of the industry, do you think that there are some things that, maybe two, two sides, do you think that there's some things that the traditional industry uh, would do well learning from like this new age of, I guess, influencer driven uh, content? And also, do you think that there's stuff that influencers and people who grew up basically using social media can learn from kind of old school industry. I don't know, what, what do you think? Yeah, I think first of all, uh, the, the regular labels can definitely learn uh, the new way of promoting an artist and how they connect with their fans and just going out of their old school ways by implementing social media in a different way, organizing uh, different kinds of uh, social interactions with their, with, with their audience and their fans. I think um, nowadays our young artists, uh, and I'm not talking about these beautiful artists here, I'm talking about certain artists, they don't take an effort on, um, you know, rehearsing or just being a good artist on the stage. You know, it takes it takes vocal lessons. You to, to to keep your uh, voice. Going. It takes um, eating spoons of honey when you're sick. It right. Takes, uh, tea, <laughs> olive oil. It takes so many things. People do not. You know. I mean, we both were sick. Uh, we were literally sick before VidCon, and I was texting her. I was like, "What do I do? Yes. <laughs> I cannot lose my voice before the show." <laughs> I was I was out for a week. I said, "Sandra, I'm not talking for a week." Yeah. Just, that's it. Yeah, people do not know. No, talking for one week. I sat silently in my room. Even my family, I said, no, I'm not picking up the phone. And then she got sick like a week after. She's like, 
I barely have a voice, but I'm gonna be fine. I said, honey, honey girl. <laughs> honey, yeah, honey. <laughs> honey. <laughs> have any of you ever had to perform while you were sick? Oh yeah. 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 Many yeah. times. Yeah. Sick, no, but tired. Uh, <laughs> I had it's like worse. I want to yell what I'm singing, you know? I had like, yeah, I had like tours where I had like, you know, I was, my choreography was so heavy. Like I did like one or two hour show. And uh, you know, on high heels, dancing, and I was always in pain because I have a chronic uh, back pain, so it's always there. We always have to stay super healthy. Not yeah, only yeah. our voice, you know, but our whole body, like physically, uh, physically, physically we have to be always. Uh, I'm also somebody who physically gets easily tired, so for me, if, if there's a show, it's very important to to kind of um, like wake up early, try to eat well. Uh, not stay up too late, all those things, they really matter in your performance. And as an audience, you can see that. And the artist, you can see whether, they can see through you, like, yeah. oh, this artist is, is tired, or they're not delivering, you know, the best, they can, the best that they can. So, those things. Yeah, I mean, it happens. We, even the, the best international artists have said it happens that we don't sometimes perform well, you know, because, uh, Performance after performance, we we have to get some rest sometimes. So and good yeah. sleep, you have to sleep a lot. Yes, yeah. yeah, so give you an example. I think uh, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we all need more sleep. <laughs> we were just a couple of months ago in uh, Beirut, and we went there for two weeks. So we went to shop two new videos, and I had to create in a short amount of time a whole team there, and I didn't know really what to expect, but this is the beauty of social media. I found my choreographer from, online, online yeah. from uh, Instagram, and I immediately loved her. And she was the reason, next to the director who's Lebanese, I went there. But my two weeks, I didn't see much of Beirut, by the way, uh, because from the morning I was taking Arabic classes, and then in the afternoon we were like rehearsing uh, three hours a day, and then I was meeting the team, and it was sleeping, eating, training, and for two weeks long, uh, until we did the two shoots, we did like a press conference there, and I remember after that, I was exhaust, exhausted. <laughs> but it was a, such a beautiful, beautiful experience to, to meet, uh, you know, all these people there, to work in a country that I'd never been, uh, to have, you're, you're doing what you love. Yeah, yeah. And to shoot this beautiful uh, video clips in a place that I've never been, it was very, it was very inspiring. And I think, if I can speak for myself, this is the reason why I'm an artist. You can, uh, you, you can take me anywhere in the world, and I can sing, and I'll be the happiest woman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing more important than waking up in the morning and knowing that you're gonna do what you love. I think for me it's the most important thing in life. I would rather sacrifice something that maybe will bring me income, lots of money, but if I'm not happy, I would rather not do it, you know? So... True. Yeah. And... Yeah, go for and it. What was that? <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> we do what we love. I was trying to focus the opera spirit and... Okay, and what? We do what we love. We do what we love. <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel every single artist uh, can, like real artists, real artists, they just love music or art, and you cannot like you cannot work in a in a regular job daily. Like ninety percent, I can relate because I have a lot of friends who, who actually sing uh, or produce music, whatever, and they actually left their uh, their regular job with a lot of money, like monthly like payments, uh, and they left it just for music and just because they love this. So that's why we're like that, that's why it's really it's really it's really hard for you to gain uh, to gain a lot of fans and just keeping them uh, attached with you. Yeah, that's why I think. Don't get me wrong, but I think it's really important to always have something on the side mm. to keep to stay healthy and to be able with this money to I do agree. what you love to use this money for the recording sessions, the music video, because a person finance. I, financially, I do everything myself, so uh, I always had jobs on the side. I used to be a teacher for kids, like in nurseries, so 
I think that it's very important to have something on the side until you find this day that you don't need anymore and then you can leave it, you know. But I really recommend that if you want to like, be a full-time artist, it's important first to have something on the side to be healthy and then to leave it because or else people will think that I have to make it and your passion won't become your passion anymore. It's gonna become like I have to make it and it's just gonna be about money. Totally. I feel like having something on the side also just to have a mental break. I mean just from being in like artist mode all the time. Um, Definitely. Well, can I have a question? I yeah. have a question for you. Chris. I have a question for you yeah. too because you're so shy but you're actually one of the first <laughs> People on YouTube that discovered a way uh, to get a big, big crowd, and I'm wondering yeah. how that was for you as an artist. Oh man, um, you know, I feel like I have been messing around with social media for probably 12 years, uh, and every platform, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, you know, I always try to find what works, and it, it's just. What, every time I think I have it figured out, I realize I know nothing. And I'm just always trying to put stuff up that I hope makes people smile and, and that people will maybe want to share. And um, I feel like what has been successful for me has been like not giving up. And in 12 years, there's highs and lows. And if you focus on the numbers, sometimes you're just going to be really down because some years, you know, it's, it's a big... Yeah. It's a big roller coaster, and I just, at this point, I just try to do stuff that I like. So, I what's your favorite platform? Haha. <laughs> you know, right now, I'm really enjoying TikTok, actually, and I think it might be because, um, maybe it's a little bit because once we do something for so long, then anything fresh just feels like, oh, this is like fun. This yeah. is like not a job in the way that. Maybe something else feels a little bit more like like work and the grind of it all. So I don't know. For for me, I I just like having fun and finding new ways to share music. You know, I'm always trying to make music in weird ways. What's your favorite platform? What are all of your favorite platforms? Uh, I love Instagram. Yeah, I think it's super easy to use. Uh, I'm loving Instagram Reels as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I it's like the new TikTok. It's, yeah. it's the new TikTok, yeah. yeah. Have any of you tried messing around with YouTube uh, shorts at all? And, and if so, how does that compare with TikTok and, and Reels to, for, for you? I, I tried posting a video, but I didn't understand the platform that well, so I thought it was it was like another app. So so when I posted the video, everyone who's subscribed to my channel saw the video in like a weird way, I don't know, like a vertical. So I just deleted it. I was like scared of what was happening. So I didn't understand it. I don't know why. Maybe like, we didn't get it yet in the yeah. a lot. I mean every time there is a new platform I just start sweating, you know? <laughs> it's like oh my god. But me for, for example, like if if I'm able to share my own experience on YouTube, YouTube has been life changing for me. YouTube was my very first uh, cover. I still remember it was Heart Attack by Demi Lovato, and I uploaded it on, in 2013. Um, it got like 100,000 views, which at that time was, I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. Like 100,000? Uh, but then, then I started to take YouTube as a regular platform. Um, I saw that my older brother, he was daily vlogging. Daily is super hard, but I tried to go for a weekly. And I did weekly vlogging, etc. Then I started to incorporate music in it. So my music videos, and then I divided it as like sections. So like um, Sanjay Sahi vlogs, Sanjay Sahi collaborations, Sanjay Sahi music. And um, it became like a proper structured YouTube page. And you could see all sorts of content. And then I did covers who also reached like 5 million views. My originals who last year I released a song that has, I think, Two and a half million as well. So, and do you YouTube think it's harder hard. now because everybody is now using it? Because back then, maybe you were one of the mm -hmm. few, so it was, it was more reachable. But now, yeah. how, how do you think? Like YouTube, I, I, I hate to pull it, but we're we're, not, we're gonna be we're gonna be timed out pretty okay. soon here. I'll make it really quick. So, cool. I'll make it really quick. Uh, YouTube is a is a much harder. 
YouTube, YouTube is a much harder platform to use than Instagram, but it is it is a commitment. It's um, you have to be committed to YouTube because it's, it's just not a platform where you just upload. You have to think everything through. You have to edit. You have to plan um, all of that. So yeah. It's a platform that changed my life for sure. <laughs> um, I want to thank you all for, for talking. And I, this you. is so much fun just to, to hear from you guys, just from me. Like, personally, sure. thank, thank you from me. Um, thank you for coming. And just uh, really quick, if you had one piece of advice and like really short and sweet from, from each of you to someone who just wants to start out in music today, what, what would it be? Um, as cheesy as it sounds, and everybody says this, but it's very true. Go for what you're really passionate about. I think all of us were passionate about making music. Go for it. Don't let the numbers drop you. Don't let anyone who's like, what you're doing is, is not good, kind of, you know. Because at the end of the day, there's people who are going to love what you do, and people who are not going to love what you do. How about you, Leo? I think I would say aim for happiness. Just try to be happy in life. And Larissi? I agree with the two, and then I would like to add, it's very important to have good people around you, because as much as you want to be an artist, an artist never rides alone, and the team is everything. So make sure that you have people in your team that love you, that are healthy, that support you, and that always have your back. I feel like that is a really underrated answer right there. And, and bring, bring it all home. Muhammad, what do you think? I agree with all of them, <laughs> of course. Uh, and I can add, never give up. Yeah. Okay. Don't give up. Kurt, any advice from you? Oh, uh, any advice from me? You know, uh, I would say, um, trust yourself. So, uh, it's really easy to um, try to do things that you think other people want. But I say, tr trust yourself. And Amazing. Thank you. With that, thing, thank you guys and so much for coming. I thank hope you guys you. enjoy the rest thank of the day. Thank you to our panelists.